Hello, hello. Episode 178 of Livestream Insiders. Thanks very much indeed for your company again for this episode. And today, this is what we're going to be discussing. We take a look at uh, Facebook's report on Facebook Watch. Also, going to be looking at the uh, the uh, streaming app called, in fact, it's not an app, it's a site platform, StreamYard. Now, I know several people who usually watch live stream insiders are on StreamYard, so I'll be really grateful for your thoughts and your input on what you think of that particular platform. Plus, updates to BeLive, which is pretty similar to StreamYard, as to be said, and also, does Facebook Live really have a fantastic organic reach? A report out this week has put that to the test. Hello, I'm Peter Stewart. I've got a background in professional broadcasting in radio and television and training around the world. My co-host and indeed the instigator of Livestream Insiders is Krishna Day. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us, whether you're watching live or you're watching a replay on video or even the podcast episode. Peter and I are really passionate about bringing you really ideas, tips, news stories and examples. And Peter himself live streams a lot from his mobile device. I do more live streaming and live meetings, in fact, using desktop. And that's why we collaborate and we have this show. We have another show which we can tell you about later on. But I'm going to pass it straight back to Peter to get us kick started with this week's news. If you have an idea or if somebody makes a claim, it's always great to perhaps put that to the test. If you can do some A and B testing, it's not possible always to get an exact match. However, this is what one particular group has done over the course recently. Uh, from Biteable.com, they decided to test the hypothesis of whether or not you could get a better organic reach through a live stream. And they particularly decided to put Facebook Lives ideas and, uh, and, and and thesis to the test. So Facebook Live, is that does that have a better organic reach than uh, non-live videos? That's what they decided to uh, experiment with. And if it is different, is it, if it is better, by how much was it better? So they put uh, five different videos up on uh, their Facebook page which are or were already pre-recorded videos, and then did another five Facebook Live videos. Now, as I say, it's always going to be a little bit awkward to do A-B testing in any kind of situation because the situation isn't always exactly the same. You're going to have different people watching. And in this particular case, they had, uh, of course, slightly different videos. There's no word in their report that Krishna and I were reading this week exactly how similar those videos were uh, in either content or duration or production values. However, they put those to the test. And first of all, they checked to see those three second video watches and uh, the views, the reaches and the total engagement. So, as I say, first of all, the three second video views and what came out tops? Was it the live stream or was it the pre recorded video? Live stream or pre recorded video? In fact, live stream was so much better than the pre recorded video. In fact, uh, they uh, said that they crushed the standard video presentations with three second views. People, they said, were definitely watching for longer in a live stream. And I suppose that probably goes back to that jeopardy thing. You don't know what's going to happen. It's in the moment. So you've got that kind of frisson of excitement. You know that lots of people are watching at exactly the same time as you. So that's number one. Number two, Facebook Live uh, and uh, whether it reached more people. What do you reckon? Facebook Live, standard video, which one reached more people? Again, it was. Facebook Live, two times the reach, 2x the reach of non-live. And finally, Facebook Live again was better at engagement. And I suppose, again, that probably comes back to if you think you're watching with other people, you're more likely to comment because you're going to get some or potentially you're going to get some kind of feedback. You're going to get some back of some kind of affirmation back from the presenter, from the producer, from the production team, who are perhaps at the very least likely to say hello to you, which is something that is unlikely, of course, to happen if it is a pre-recorded video and the producer or the presenter isn't there 
even when it's premiered, they're not likely to be putting any kind of comment back. So there you go. Facebook Live, uh, of course, they say can be saved. Once you've done it, you could, if you are certainly doing it on your phone, you could also, of course, save it to your phone, edit it. It's what I've done several times before. Uh, edit it and put it out again as another video later on after the fact. You're already using the content you live streamed, but you could cut it down from, say, 10 minutes just to 60 seconds, perhaps. You could take the best bits, you could caption it, you could put it up again a few days later or on another occasion and drive more traffic to that pre-recorded video, although it was once live. So there you go. This uh, article from biteable.com, we had the, uh, the stats a few moments ago. And it'd be really interesting if you can perhaps uh, report back yourselves if uh, you have noticed any visible or obvious difference between a live video and a pre-recorded produced video in that kind of situation. Krishna, some interesting kind of, uh, well, not kind of A-B testing, but almost that. But of course, we don't actually know in what kind of situation that was, how kind of scientific that was. But certainly from their um, um, potential uh, kind of uh, ad hoc testing of that, it certainly seemed to stand up to the test. It certainly does. And, you know, Facebook for some time have actually been talking about how much more reach you get and engagement with live content but it's good to see somebody independently doing that as you said peter we can do those tests ourselves the other thing we might want to do if it's facebook content and peter was talking about he downloads that content onto his mobile device equally could it be happening with your desktop as well if you have access to that video and you can obviously download it from facebook but of course if you're using a platform like blue jeans then you get an hd recording of it not only could you repurpose it you could put it with other content you could then do a couple of things one is you actually could put out, out if it is substantially different in terms of when you've made, let's say put several parts of that content together let's say you've been doing a series of live streams and then you want to bring the highlights of those together you can actually put that out now as a facebook premiere and of course, then you could also use Facebook Watch. I'm going to be talking about Watch a little bit later in the show. Now, though, I want to turn our minds and attention to a platform that I know many people I'm connected with, and I know many people who actually participate in live stream insiders on a weekly basis have actually been testing. And it's a platform called BeLive. BeLive has been around for about two years. Um, Peter and I both interviewed the um, CEO and founder of BeLive when they first launched around four, two years ago, I think it is now. And they've actually recently launched, so at the end of June, they recently launched BeLive Studio 2, and it's in beta at this point in time. I want to give you the highlights of what you can actually enjoy with beta. Now, we didn't actually report this at the time we had our last show because it wasn't available at that time. However, I know there's been a few glitches at the beginning, so perhaps this is just as well that we actually left it until um, those glitches have been ironed out. But it is available for us all free to use. So if you actually were using the original BeLive, there's a little switch button when you go into your BeLive studio, you actually then can test out the studio to beta. Let's tell you about some of the features that you might want to use. So there's four key things I want to talk about. The fourth one, and this is in rising importance from my perspective, the fourth one, it's not just available now on Chrome, it's actually also available on Safari. So if Safari is your preferred browser of choice, then you may want to check that out. I personally like Firefox, which is what I'm using at, at the moment in terms of uh, using um, my kind of uh, desktop. But of course, you might have different preferences in terms of the tools that you want to use. The third thing I uh, kind of kind of number four was, as I said, Safari, not just Chrome. Number three, um, every tool is available in a single studio that includes your screen sharing, your uploading of images from the computer. And the Studio 2 beta version has got a much bigger preview screen, which means it's easier for you to actually manage it. And that's particularly if you're 
hosting the show and producing it yourself, or in fact, if you are the producer of the show. That's the third thing. Now, in terms of uh, going back, in terms of number two, very important. Uh, one of the things that Be Live allows you to do is schedule your live streams. Now, we can't do that using the platform we're using, but you might like to do that because then you have a holding place and you can actually then promote that in terms of it could be in you know some time in advance and you could therefore share it in your newsletter um, on your intra on your intranet on your extranet you could uh, search uh, share it for example in your social media channels uh, you could create other content to promote your show but you get a link that you can promote and one of the challenges has been if for example, you have to change the time of the show. That could be for all sorts of reasons, let's say technical reasons. It could be your guest has to actually change their availability. Perhaps you're no longer available at that original time. Or you've realized perhaps there's some big event going on and you don't want to actually have your live stream take time, take the time of that stream actually happening. So that's really very, very good news. That you can actually change the time and the date in terms of really at the last minute for that live stream that you've scheduled and the top area that i'm really interested in so that's four three two one and this is for the host again i'm going to come to actually uh, guests in just a moment but users are able to change their theme so one of the things you can do with be live is you actually can have some background graphics you can have overlays and you can do that actually when you're on the live stream one of the challenges before was you had to prepare all of that including any images for example that you wanted to share so for example you could be screen capturing some things or you've actually decided there's something else that you want to share during the course of the live stream of course make sure you've got the rights to share that content um, but you actually can do that in real time now you don't have to have it all prepped in advance now I'd say much, much, as much prep as you can do, the better, but it is good to have that flexibility. And the other area of that in terms of uh, sources, you can actually have multiple camera sources and importantly, mute guests. So if you've got a guest with you and there's a lot of background noise for whatever reason, then you can actually mute them. Let's turn to the guests. They've got lots of new features as well. Uh, but in terms of the key thing there is actually sharing their screen. So a lot of guests want to be able to share something. Let's say you are bringing them on and they're actually doing a tutorial with you. Actually, rather than you as the host or producer to share it, you actually can have the guests do that as well. They also can turn off their camera. So some people prefer not to be actually on camera when they're streaming. And importantly, they can actually mute their microphone. So if they realize something's going on behind them or there's a fire engine or something you know, going off down the street, they can actually mute themselves. And so that's really, really good features. Now, I know there've been a few problems initially with BeLive Studio. I definitely recommend that you test it out. You can access it now for free while it's in beta, even if you hadn't been a BeLive customer beforehand. And important to note as well, that the feature, one of the features that BeLive has had, which I know a lot of people enjoy, is the fact that you can actually bring comments on screen. And that feature is still available in BeLive Studio 2. And they actually put in an article that they wrote about the update that they analyzed more than 150,000 broadcasts and discovered that the, you, the number of comments increased actually 3.3 times. So when you're highlighting comments on screen, then that's actually going to increase the engagement and interactivity in your live stream. I know that's one of the reasons that many people like to use BeLive. I'd love to see them bring out the facility for us to be able to stream to other platforms. And importantly for us on the Live Stream Insiders, because we do like to repurpose high quality content in terms of HD content, um, having the ability to download videos in HD would be great. And I think if they introduce those couple of things, I think they also see some further uses of their platform. There's lots of other platforms available. Some are Mac only, and that's why, again, this could be a good solution for you. I'm on a PC. I know, in fact, Peter's often a Mac, and there's some great tools available for, for Macs. They've almost tempted me to buy a Mac, but actually it's a huge investment. So I'm sticking with my PC at the moment, but that might be another reason that you want to look at it, because it's a good platform. It's simple to use, 
and they've actually got lots of tutorials available on YouTube. Plus, they've got an active Facebook page and an active community should you actually have any questions and want to reach out to them there. You're watching Live Stream Insiders with Krishna Day and Peter Stewart. Krishna is back in a few moments' time with details about uh, Facebook Watch, but uh, an app which is uh, pretty similar uh, to uh, Be Live, and that is one called StreamYard, which is an interesting name, but then heck, so is Blue Jeans, isn't it? So StreamYard uh, is uh, very, very interesting. As I say, quite similar to Be Live. I have been doing some shows on Be Live up until recently, but of course there was that pesky thing that you only had about 14 days until they started charging you. However, on StreamYard at the moment, the basic uh, price model is absolutely free. And as I say, the interface is quite similar. There are some pros, there are some cons, there are some positives and there are some negatives. Now, I know some regular listeners to live stream insiders or viewers as well. Uh, so the likes of Barb and Eileen and Ross, I've seen you uh, lurk around StreamYard and do some programs on there and talk about StreamYard on social media and on their Facebook page as well. So I'd love you to put in the comments uh, what you think of StreamYard. Uh, as you may be able to see there, it's got a quite a similar uh, interface. It's got some things which are very, very similar indeed. But as I say, uh, the basic price model is that it is absolutely free, at least for the moment. And interestingly, in the last couple of days, I was sent a discount code that if I wanted to trial out their second tier pricing model, then they would give me a reduction of, well, actually not much, to be quite honest. It was only a couple of three dollars slash pounds slash euros a month. And I worked it out. It would be around 35 pounds over the course of a year. So I don't know. Is that worth it? Am I actually going to be committed enough to be live streaming? Uh, on such a regular basis. But let me tell you what those different models are and those different pros and cons. It is free, but you do have the StreamYard branding. So it says StreamYard and also has got a rather unusual logo of a duck. So if you don't mind that, that's not a problem at all. It streams to Facebook and to YouTube and also recently to Periscope and Twitter as well. Now, of course, as we already know, if something is streaming to Facebook, then it's you're unlikely to be able to stream to other platforms at the same time. You are able to stream to other places if you go via uh, another a, another unit. So that would be more expense and also more trouble for you, more kit to buy, more things to think about as you go live. But certainly within the app, you can do it through Facebook, YouTube and Periscope, Twitter. Uh, if you pay £25 a month, then you will have the branding removed. You'll be able to replace that with your own branding and you'll be able to add some overlays. However, at the moment already, you can bring in other sources. You can bring in, for example, the screen share, and also you can play in other videos too. And also you can schedule a post for Facebook Live, and it will automatically tell your uh, followers on Facebook that that is what you are doing. You can see and share live comments. So again, like Be Live, you can actually make it clear that when somebody makes a comment on your Facebook page, they can also bring that in via um, via your StreamYard uh, with uh, various interesting graphics. So that's pretty good as well. I haven't actually tested out with Periscope or Twitter and how that works with any comments you may get on those pages, but I guess that's going to be pretty much the same. Uh, although I don't know how that would work with, uh, with your Periscope hearts. So do bear that in mind if Periscope hearts uh, and that is of, uh, of interest to you. You can have six guests at a time. A total of 10 guests can be either on air or in the green room at any one time. So various different combinations of how your screen is going to be laid out. Be Live, of course, has been bringing in those different back screens and different formats, different styles for your show. Be live, excuse me, StreamYard not able to do that at the moment as far as I'm aware. The cons, well, not actually going to Instagram, if that is a problem for you. I have noticed that sometimes it's a little bit buggy, but even in the few times I've been using it over the course of the last couple of three months, that has got better and better. And certainly the picture quality and so on is pretty good as well. Uh, they don't have a mobile app like uh, Be Live does. 
However, you can actually go straight in through your browser on a mobile phone. So arguably that's not necessarily a huge problem, but it does mean that you can't actually instigate a live program through the browser as far as I'm aware. So in that regard, it's pretty similar to be live as well, that the instigator, that the main presenter, the producer, the host has to have initiated the program via the actual desktop. And um, you don't have a, any login particular problems with, uh, with StreamYard. They actually send you a code and they explain that makes it much easier for them and much easier for guests to actually join you as well because they actually get a code and they get an invitation uh, via uh, perhaps uh, Facebook or, or email or whatever it is that you're using so either messenger or email all in all it's I think pretty good if you want to save a few quid and not actually go via be live you're not necessarily going to get all the bells and whistles but you would still continue to use it for free and at $25 a month for the second tier service I think that still beats be live with their second year tier service or indeed i suppose it is first year uh, excuse me first year service once you've used up that 14 day free trial so if you just want to get your message out there and you want to be streaming to those various platforms certainly something to be well worth considering i really like the fact peter that they've now introduced periscope and also twitter i think that's um, a really good move. As you said, you might, may not be able to access some of the features. So, for example, on Periscope now, uh, although I still don't have it on Twitter, you know, you can have guests come in, can't you, in terms of directly from the platform. Um, I haven't been able to get that available on my Twitter account. I've yet again messaged Twitter about that. But on Periscope, you can do that audio live stream and, and have other people join you. So you may not be able to get some of the access to some of those features if you, because you're using a third party tool, but it's a definite one to actually have a look at and explore um, with the features. And what I really like about them is they do their um, town halls, as they call them. And so they're often telling you about all the latest updates and you can learn and, and speak to them on a regular basis. Um, so and they've been very active in terms of updating um, the platform over the last year or so as it's been around. So we hope that gives you another tool that you can use. We'll stay with Facebook for a moment, though, in terms of for my last story for you, and that's about catching up with Facebook Watch. Mm, should I dare say this to you, given the fact that we're streaming on Facebook? I really don't like Facebook Watch. I don't like the fact that when I'm watching a video, it then is forcing me to, so let's say I'm on my mobile device, it's forcing me to be in watch and watch other content. But hey, it's for free for me as a, somebody who's participating in terms of not only streaming there, but also actually consuming content. So I probably shouldn't complain because if I was watching TV and a commercial channel on my mobile phone as well, then I actually be um, showing ads there unless I pay to uh, kind of ignore them. And of course, on YouTube, there's ads as well. But let's take a look at Facebook Watch a year on. Now, this is an article that was published in the Facebook newsroom. We'll refer to you to all of the resources that we've talked about today at the end of the show. Or if you're watching this or listening to this um, later on, then you actually be able to um, pick up the links from wherever we've posted this content. So let me just talk about in terms of what's going on now with um, Facebook Watch. Um, watching videos um, really is something that actually Facebook is looking for us to do more with other people. Their view and their point of view, their perspective is that actually watching videos can help you connect more deeply with people instead of actually it being a passive or a solitary experience. I have to say, sometimes I like the solitary experience, so I don't have my kids asking me questions all the time about what have I just missed and what's that about? And, so, and thank goodness for rewinds, because I have to rewind things for things that I like to watch on, let's say on my mobile on TV, if I've actually missed it. But anyway, they actually really believe in, and that's the premise in terms of Facebook Watch. So it's been launched less than a year ago and now more than 720 million people monthly. That's 720 million people monthly and 140 million people daily are spending at least one minute in watch. On average, daily visitors are spending more than 26 minutes in watch 
every single day. Wow, that's a lot of time. Almost half an hour a day watching content on Facebook Watch. Um, and that's, you know, that's on average, they're saying. So some people are watching a lot more than that. And so they actually go on and they talk about building watch for social video. And they give an example of a show called Red Table Talk in Watch. Now what you're going to see is the official group alongside the video. So a lot of organizations may have got, um, let's say media organizations may have a group that actually runs alongside a particular show that they're doing. And if that's the case, you'll be able to see it and therefore pop in and actually interact with people who are members of that group or even in fact the hosts themselves. Um, they said that they're testing new sections in Watch and they actually want to find ways that actually videos that are popular with friends um, actually being there as a section for us to be aware of. So, you know, it's almost like your friends have watched this, therefore you might be interested in it too. And they say that face people are actually eight times more likely to comment on videos in a watch party than watching on their own. So for example, this has been streamed live. I know that some people have actually shared this into a Facebook group um, and actually have then had a watch party alongside us being live at the same time. You could equally do a Facebook um, watch party after a show has happened, as I mentioned earlier on. Um, and what that was really, really interesting to see that eight more times more likely to comment on videos in a watch party than when you're watching on your own. And that's because of the conversation that goes on behind it. Okay, I think we may have lost you just there. Um, apologies for that, technical hitch today. Hopefully you can hear me now. Um, so they're saying that the best way for us to bring, to actually have um, great content into Watch is for them to create a sustainable ad supported ecosystem where every publisher and creator can reach their audience um, and also make money from their videos and thrive on the platform. And they said ad breaks are now available to more than 40 countries. Um, and they said that the number of pages that are actively using ad breaks has more than tripled over the last year. And the number of pages earning more than a thousand US dollars in payouts per month has increased more than eight times. And the number of pages earning more than $10,000 in payouts actually has increased more than three times. So really interesting information there in terms of actually what's going on with um, the Facebook Watch actually ecosystem. Um, and it's actually going to be available for you in terms of at the end of the show, you'll be able to have a look at that content um, in the article. Also of note, BuzzFeed and Group 9 Media are some of the publishers that are finding success with ad breaks and increasing their use across their pages and leveraging tools like automatic ad placement to earn money and also for engaging and creative videos. Now, the other thing to mention about Facebook Watch is they are continuing to invest in content. Um, Facebook Watch Originals, are, they're partnering with publishers and creators around the world so they can bring timely, relevant and entertaining videos, as they say, to Facebook Watch. They've got global partnerships. One of note to me was the International Cricket Club, and they're actually making match previews and highlights and insider commentary available from every ICC Cricket World Cup uh, match available through Watch. And also in terms of originals, their originals are going to continue, um, and they've got some examples of that in their news article that they did about it. And another area that they're doing some work in is creator and digital publisher collaborations. So that in March, they actually launched a program that connects creators with digital publishers, and that resulted in the creation of some new shows to debut on Facebook Watch. They finished the news article by saying, we're committed to making Watch the best place for everyone around the world to discover and watch videos together. So really good to actually see an update from Facebook themselves about what's going on with Watch almost a year on since they actually launched it. And it'd be great to know if you've been actually experiencing some really good success with using Facebook Watch as well. So we had a little bit of a glitch in the show just before. So I just want to um, end up the show here because I can see that Peter is actually no longer on the show with me. Um, so just to let you know, Peter and I have been live streaming together for about four years now, bringing you the Live Stream Insiders. 
but we also have another show. So if you want to catch us next week, you'll be able to catch us live streaming on the uh, Smart Speakers Facebook page. The Smart Speakers is a show where actually what we're covering is all about information in relation to um, voice news and uh, that could be smart speakers, but also in terms of podcasting. And both Peter and I are veterans in podcasting and we also have produced um, uh, shows in terms of content and in terms of into platforms such as Alexa um, in terms of with flash briefings. Peter's actually got a couple of shows that are currently live at this point in time. And I actually have been including smart speakers in the workshops that I have been delivering certainly over the last 12 plus months or so. So if you want to keep up with the latest news in terms of for audio, particularly around smart speakers and podcasting, then join us for the Smart Speakers podcast. We stream live on Facebook at the Smart Speakers Facebook page every other week. Otherwise, you'll find us here in terms of on the live stream insider show. And we'll see you again in terms of the news from the live stream insiders, where we bring you the latest live video and also some social video news often. And we'll be here on the live stream insiders page in just two weeks time. So we're here on the first and the third Sundays of each week. So thank you so much for joining me live here and Peter in terms of on the live stream insiders. Um, we've hope that we've actually given you some ideas and inspiration and this week some tools that you might want to look at in terms of using for your live streams. Until next time, thank you so much. This is myself, Krish today and Peter Stewart signing out for this week's episode of the Livestream Insiders.